question is from Jeremiah Johnson. Besides calves, what is your favorite body part to develop, and how do you go about training it? <laughs> they must be talking to you guys. Yeah, it's a slight, <laughs> slight jab there. Yeah, I know. Hey. You know, some of my favorite body parts to train um, are my favorites because they were, when I was younger, they were areas that were difficult mm. uh, to develop. <laughs> So like when I first started working out, um, there were a few things that I was very, I was obviously body image issues. I would talk about this often on the podcast. It's what motivated me. There were a particular parts of my body that I was really, you know, concerned with. One of them was my shoulders. I'm not a wide person structurally. I don't have a wide bone structure. Um, so I had no muscle plus I was narrow to begin with and I didn't like the way I looked in t-shirts. I felt like I looked like, like a coat hanger. So I made a special emphasis on training my shoulders. Now I did a good job with my technique and my my program or whatever. My shoulders ended up becoming a, a strong suit. Until this day, I really love the feeling of training my shoulders. I love the way they look when they're pumped. It's a fun body part uh, to train. Same thing for my back. I had the mm. same problem with my back. It was skinny. I wasn't wide. Um, and I remember just I remember like it was yesterday the first time I got a lat pump, and it was when I had been working out my back for a little while. Couldn't feel my back working. I think a lot of people have this issue when they first start working out. It's like, I just feel it in my biceps. I'm like, am I really working my back? Yeah. And I read this article on supersets, and I did a pre-exhaust superset where I did dumbbell pullovers, which is more of an isolation movement, and I went straight to pull-ups. And I remember getting down off those pull-ups and standing there and being like, what? Mm -hmm. I have a pump? Am I? That feels weird. Oh, my. I was so excited about it, and, and I love those two parts. Yeah. Still my favorites. I'm your, I'm your prototypical like Monday chest day guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am that guy. Like I, I've always loved, uh, you know, building and developing the chest. And, uh, it was just something that, again, this is kind of playing into your strengths. And, um, it was one of those things I found that, that I could compete with somebody that was like a good 50, 60 pounds heavier than me. You know, like I could, I could hang with, with people in that lift specifically. And then also, uh, you know, with my triceps as well. So it's kind of that combo of the chest triceps where, you know, I was like it dips or bench press. If, if I couldn't think of anything in the gym, it's like I'm doing one or the other because <laughs> at, for some, it just gave me this good feeling. I just felt strong and capable and, uh, I, you know, it didn't hurt that I, I beat the record for like dips at, at my school at the time. So I was like was it for reinforcing number? it. Was it for no total dips or weight? Strapped with a dip. No, it was total dips. What was yeah, the was what was the number? number? Yeah. Nine hundred and something. No, I don't. I don't even remember to be honest. Typical well, Justin. He's well, so yeah. he's so humble. I know yeah. he's like. I like, would know that number. It was like, <laughs> like hundred and thirty. I don't remember. It's no in the deal. past, bro. Dude. Adam and I. Adam would have a tattoo of it. Yeah. I would know it for sure. Like, oh, it was hundred. definitely over a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, you know what's actually funny about this question is that. When I, as a kid, 100% uh, it was arms, because I think for the first three years of lifting weights, all I did was arms. Um, and then after that, I I actually have fall, I've always, still to this day, fallen in love with training the body part that is the the weakest or most underdeveloped. Yeah. And what a great mental strategy. I know. Yeah, right. Like, learned, I've learned to do that. But yeah. yeah. So and and, and the, it being completely transparent on is probably my least favorite of those of those. There's a lot there was lots of underdeveloped parts is calves and forearms because they're probably the least contributors to almost everything else going on with the body. Like it's like yeah, if you yeah, if you got strong arms, having you know weaker forearms, whatever you know, what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like they, they're responsible for very little. Your calves, eh, if my legs are fucking jacked and cool, my kid, whatever they're not. so. I think that those ones have always probably I would say those are my least two favorite to to work and develop on because I think they're just as far as contributing to your overall strength, your overall physique. I feel like they play the the least amount of role. Plus, I think they have the the greatest difference genetic wise. You either have great big forearms, you have great calves. Not that you can't develop those two, because I have done that in both areas. It's just less fun in comparison to everyone else. Everything else, like I've loved go. I love going to the gym. I mean, currently right now, like it's it's quad and squats for me. Like I'm all into that. Where I'm in powerlifting, it makes sense to be kind of in that in that focus. And so. I'm really enjoying developing my legs right now. And I've been here before where that's a focus. Uh, I can attest to Sal's shoulders. I remember I've shared the story uh, when one of my female uh, trainer clients that used to compete uh, told me that my I asked her to assess my physique because she was a competitor and she said I had weak shoulders and I remember that was like hurt my feelings. And I, <laughs> you know, that became and that actually kind of started 
Uh, Somebody that. said no delts to me the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, like, cool. Yes, <laughs> said that said that to Thanks me, that. and that set me down the path of developing shoulders, and my shoulders became one of my strengths, and that probably is what lit the fire of like looking at my physique and going like, oh, my chest is weak, oh, my back is weak, oh, my quads are weak, oh, my hamstrings are weak, and then programming to address that. And what what's neat is when you when you understand when you've been lifting for a really long time that chasing after the areas that you're weak in gives you that sense, almost that like that novelty thing again, where the body is going to respond best. If I go and let's say my biceps, for example, is a, a major strength of mine because of all the, the work I did early on and still continued that for many years, it's kind of boring to train them uh, because th I'm not going to squeeze very much out of them, even uh, at when my arms are at their biggest. I can get back to my biggest arms ever with very little effort because I've already put all it's the work. It's just not challenging. It's not challenging. Yeah. It's easy. I'm but, like that with quads. Right, right. So if you if it's an area that it's easy for me to develop, I'm less interested in. I'm more interested in the areas where like, oh, man, if I put some work in, I could see a difference and change. So at, at one point, they've all, uh, I mean, shoulders at one time was that. I mean, back when I was doing the deadlift thing with Sal and I was competing because your back is like for sure one of the biggest difference makers in men's physique, uh, having an impressive back. So I, I got a kick out of developing that, my, and my shoulders, my arms, uh, my chest for sure. There was a point where uh, I had an, an uneven chest. My, my left pec was significantly larger than my right. And so addressing the imbalances there, then catching it up, and then getting actually a really good, strong bench and a, and a, a pretty good chest. Uh, I, I've, I've enjoyed all of it. I, I really refra reframe uh, how I look at my physique as when I look at weak points and go, oh, cool, I have something that I can improve upon and program around, and I will see a difference if I follow and execute. And I, I try and give this tip to a lot of clients when – they're focusing in the gym is, you know, if you're, if you, especially if you're aesthetic driven, you know, pick something that is a, a weak area and that you go see the most improvement there than you'll fall in love with training it and you're going to train it. You're yeah. not going to skip it. Right. That's a great mental strategy.